Welcome to the Museum of Aquarium and Pet History, this being our fifth release. So today we have an unusual video. We have one of an icon in the reptile industry. Basically, it's Ross Allen. And uh, Ross Allen is probably one of the most uh, dynamic figures for 50 years in the reptile industry. He had the Ross Allen Reptile Institute. And uh, this is going to be a little video basically a short video of his institute, probably taken in the 1940s, 1950s, showing him uh, milking rattlesnakes, uh, hypnotizing an alligator, and a, a bunch of other stuff in this little video. But before we get to the video, I just want to tell you that this edition of, of MOAF has two phenomenal articles, one of them by Lee Finley on W.C. Coop. Coop actually did the very first New York Aquarium in New York City. Everyone thinks that the uh, uh, Clinton Gardens was the first New York Aquarium, and it wasn't. Coop actually did that. But Coop was a circus man, and before he did the New York Aquarium, he took uh, a circus on the road, and he actually made them, put them on a train, and was very influential to Barnum, actually taught Barnum how to do circuses on a train. But one of the interesting things he did on a train was put an aquarium on a train. He actually transported beluga whales and all kinds of different fishes. And when he set up this uh, monster shows, is what he called it, he had a, an exhibit of, of fish at a circus. So you got to check the article out and you got to check the vintage posters out in the article, which are just phenomenal. The other article is by my friend Emiliano uh, Spada. And he did an article basically on how if you're a serious collector, you really need a serious collection of catalogs. And he goes over catalogs to the nth degree, basically taking you to German catalogs as opposed to American catalogs, as opposed to all the other different types of things that you could find in a collection of catalogs. And it's real important if you're serious about getting a collection together, you should have a serious collection of catalogs. One thing I want to say too is after this short little video is done, I want to make some announcements of some upcoming things with MOAF. Uh, we've got some pretty phenomenal stuff coming up, but I'm not going to tell you just yet. Watch the video. Uh, it doesn't have any sound, so I'm going to narrate it for you. But um, it's only four, four minutes long, so once it's over, I'll tell you about some of the upcoming things that, that are going to come up on, on MOAF in the upcoming weeks. World in Color Productions presents Ross Allen Reptile Institute, Silver Springs, Florida. Ta da! There's the entrance. That is so cool. Okay, so that's probably in the 50s, maybe 40s. There's coral snakes. Coral snakes is highly venomous. Red touches yellow, kills a fellow. Red touches black, friend of Jack. That's how you can tell a coral snake from a milk snake. And here's people looking at the coral snake. They're handling it with a professional hook, which is what they usually use to pick up venomous snakes with. Over 2,000 reptiles at his exhibit. That's pretty cool. There's the alligators. And you can tell an alligator from a crocodile as alligators have a rounded, wider snout. Now he's turning it over on its back. He's going to hypnotize the alligator. Uh, basically, they can rub it on their belly and lay it gently on their back and they'll just stay there. Kind of a strange thing. So there he's done it. He's done the hypnotize the alligator part of the show. And uh, there's an alligator snapping turtle. One of the largest turtles in the United States. Now it's on the endangered species list. They used to eat them in turtle soup. They don't anymore. They live for a hundred plus years. They're very majestic. And they have a little worm on their tongue. So they live at the bottom of the swamp and open their mouth and the worm moves and that attracts fish. There's a giant alligator. So a lot of times when they go in with the alligators, they do it early in the morning when the alligator's cold. So they don't have to really worry about them getting feisty. Now that, this is really interesting. This is a, a Florida indigo snake. They're also an endangered species, but they're like the dog of the snake world. I had a friend who had two of them and they'll recognize their owner and you could literally open the cage and they won't come out or anything. If you have food, they'll just literally take it from your hands. So it's pretty neat. This is the, uh, the local Indians that basically were at the Institute.
And here's where he would milk rattlesnakes to make anti-venom. There's rattlesnake boots so that the fangs can't go through the boots. And he's just showing that they could be aggressive, yes. And those are eastern diamondbacks, which are really the, the largest rattlesnake in the United States and the most aggressive, actually. And now he's going to probably milk one. He's got the, you could see it rattling, you could see the mouth open, you could see the two fangs. And they do this, they get the venom so they can send it to a lab and they make anti-venom, which uh, Ross made tons of, of, well he did a lot of milking of, of rattlesnakes and sent the venom to labs so they can make it for anti-venom for the war effort during World War II. And there he's picking one up with his bare hands. And they're going back to milking the snakes again. And there you go, he's milking it on that glass flask. You can see the venom go in there, which is um, pretty interesting. You know, Ross was bit many times. One time he went into a, into a coma, the other time it just almost lost his thumb. In fact, it, it sort of it mauled his thumb so badly that whenever he did pictures, he would like hold his hand behind his back sometimes, or he'd hide his thumb. Again, Eastern Diamondback. And there's the end. Pretty cool old video. Okay, thanks for watching the video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, he was uh, quite a character and quite an icon in the reptile industry. Um, some of the things that are coming up very soon, we're gonna have a YouTube Live, and it's going to be an interview with the founders of Penplex. So those of you that collect the Penplex ornaments that are so uh, engrossed in how amazing they are, whether you're a toy collector or you're uh, an animal collector, basically you know that they've, the prices have gone from like a few dollars to hundreds of dollars on these crazy ornaments. So this is going to be a history of the company, how they started, how the name came about, you know, what they make today, and where you can get it, that kind of thing. So we will have a YouTube Live for Pinplex. I'm also going to have a 100th anniversary video for the Steinhardt Aquarium. It's their 100th anniversary. Hopefully they'll let me in behind the scenes and we could talk to the curator about a little bit of the history of the Steinhardt. That would be great. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and then I'm working also on completing an article on Metaframe, uh, one on Jewel Aquariums. We're, we're trying to, to locate the son of Jewel Aquarium, of Hans Jensen, and uh, so we can interview him. So that's, that's going to be big. And last but not least, for my birdcage friends, Hendrix. We've got a, a big article coming up on Hendrix bird cages. So uh, that's coming up in the next uh, weeks to, to few months. And I hope you'll stick with us and we'll see you then. Take care.